Just two events remain in the strongman competition here at the 2022 Rogue Invitational from Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas, and it's a repeat from 2021, the Yoke Log Medley. Thanks for being with us, everybody, here on Saturday, the final day of competition for the strongmen. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Schleich. Keith Dixon is down on the competition floor. And with just two events remaining, things have gotten much tighter on the top of the leaderboard. Just five and a half points separate first from fourth. We are in for a battle over these last two events. There is no room for mistakes now. Any little mistake is going to cost someone. We've got a lot of athletes still capable of winning. It's going to be very exciting. Overall standings coming to this event as you look at the yoke that awaits these athletes. Alexei Novikov is still our overall leader. Trey Mitchell sits in second by two and a half points. Martins Lietzi started the day six points out of first. He's trying to repeat as Rogue Invitational champion. He now trails Alexei Novikov by four. The yoke log medley is something that we saw last year. They have to carry the yoke 50 feet, and then they try to amass as many repetitions as they possibly can on that 360 pound log. Yes, interesting elements with this event. We've got two different events. Athletes would normally wear different types of shoes for these events, different equipment. So it's really making sure you can combine the two together. Last year, we saw the likes of Luke Stoltman, one of the absolute best log pressers on the planet. By the time he was done with the yoke, he was drained and he wasn't as efficient as maybe he normally would be on something like the log. Every single one of these athletes is more than capable of pressing 360 pounds. The big question is how easily do they get through that, that thousand pound yoke first? This event is presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. And since there are two very unique challenges here, what are the keys to success? I really think it's about getting through that first implement as effectively and as efficiently and quickly as possible. The more time you're under that thousand pounds, the more draining it is. And if we look at last year's winner was Mateusz Kieliszkowski in a time of 40.41 seconds. That is the target these guys will be looking to beat. I think athletes that are coming back for the second year in a row, the likes of Martins Lissis, Alexei Novikov, they have a big advantage having touched both of these bits of kit before. <laughs> Kevin Ferris will be the first man up. And here we go. Look how huge that implement is. Kevin making steady strides. He's looking nice and tight in his upper back, just moving through the legs and the hips. Thousand pounds, and this is really, I mean, a thousand pounds is a huge weight. But this is put there to drain them before they get to the second implement, the log lift. 360 pounds now, three repetitions needed. Fastest time in this event will win. Ferris going for his first rep, and he will get it. Gets it down on the first rep. Magnus for Magnuson, the head judge here. Looking on as Kevin Ferris now goes for rep number two. 360 pounds. Come on, Kevin, press. Not able to get that one. And when you get to this point in an event and you're at that fatigue level, and you fail an event, uh, fail a rep, pardon me, it's tough to get back on and get a success. It really is. It's been so tough for Kevin. He's a fantastic strongman, but he's stepping up to this rogue invitation. It's a brutal competition. Every event, tough and heavy. And he's having to go out early every single time and set the pace for the next athletes. It's always easier to have something to chase, to see other athletes go first. He's giving it his all. Just not enough right now. Two minute time cap for Ferris. He might have time to make one more run at this thing. I don't think we're going to see him get this now. Like I said, 360 pounds fresh. All these athletes hit this type of weight, no problem at all. But after doing that thousand pound yoke and then trying to do reps on this, the legs start to feel like jelly, the core starts to weaken. And you can see there, there's just no power left to get him. The 
Ferris is going to wind up with one successful rep at 360. Not a bad effort on the yoke for Kevin Ferris, but the log certainly giving him problems. It was a solid effort. I mean, the yoke is not his favorite event. He's, he's much better at frame carries, farmers walks. Those are the events he really likes, the yoke. He's moving steadily, but we're going to see quicker athletes than this on this first implement. And we've got some very, very big log lifters to come. American log lift record holder, Bobby Thompson. He will be looking to score big points on this event. Mitch Hooper, one of the fastest men on the planet when it comes to the super yoke. If he can get through that yoke quickly and save energy for the log, he's going to be good. And like I said, the likes of Alexi Novikov, Martins Lissis, and of course, Trey Mitchell has been incredible. Every single event, even the events we think he's not going to do so well at, he's been putting the work in, he's looking great, and he's putting himself in a real position now to challenge for this title. And there is Maxime Boudreau, who will be the next man up. Now, Maxime's an athlete that struggled on the yoke in the past. It's not been his favorite event. He's a very good log lifter. I've seen training videos of him looking very good, though. He's been putting in the work. Now, let's see if that training can transition into competition. Boudreau with 11 total points here. He's been disappointed with the performance so far. Spoke to him earlier. He, he's trained really hard for this competition. It just didn't start well, and then seem th things seem to go wrong af one after the other. He needs to pick up some points now and show us what he's capable of. He started off with a 10th place finish in the Tower of Power. He was unable to complete a single rep on that 900-pound deadlift, but then rebounded a little bit in the next event. Uh, finished 6th place, but then another 10th place finish in the Husafel bag carry, and then a 7th earlier this morning on the Roga Coaster of Pole. And I think that's the one that really disappointed him. The, the Rogue Coaster was an event he was looking forward to, felt he could do well on. Only getting seventh place in that event, it knocks your confidence. He needs to forget that now, focus on this event. Think about the training he's put in. He loves the log, just needs to get through this yoke as efficiently and as quickly as he can. It's interesting, look at his footwear. He's going for those wide, um, barefoot shoes. Feels they support his feet well for the event like the yoke, and he can still perform and drive hard into the ground with the, 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 the press that you kind of use to generate that leg power into the leg. Some athletes prefer Olympic-type lifting shoes, but Olympic lifting shoes are really not the best choice when it comes to the yoke. So it's figuring out what feels best for both implements. The reps to beat is two. That's one successful yoke carry the entirety of the 50-foot track, and then one log lift from Kevin Ferris. To complete the event, you need three successful log lifts. Yeah! Here goes Maxime Boudreau. Maxime's goal has to be to finish this. That's got to be his goal. Look to complete the course, put the pressure on the guys to go. He needs to make sure that upper back is as stable as possible. Strong in the core, and he's moving very well. This is looking good for Maxime. He's been putting a lot of work into this implement. It's notoriously been one of his weakest events. Unfortunately, he's gone down, then he was moving well. And one of the issues when you go down, you've got to relift that thousand pounds. That's more energy being used up and being drained before you get to the log. This is more comfortable now for him. The log is an event he likes. Let's see what energy is left. And he won motions that first rep. Viper's the first repetition. If he can do that again, he's going to be in a great position. Two reps down, he's got one to go, and he's not even at a minute yet. So Maxime Boudreau is going to complete the event. It. 47 seconds unofficially, 46.78 for Maxime Boudreau, and that is the result he has been waiting for. That's more like the Maxime we know. And that time would have been good enough for third place overall last year. Looking back at the results, 
This could be a really solid performance. As I said, Yoke has never been his favorite, but he looked solid. He made a slight mistake there where he went down. If he didn't go down, maybe he could have been challenging for the, the, the likes of the record right now, which exists with Kiliuszkowski at 40.41 seconds. Very good performance there from Maxime, and that's going to lift his spirits going into the final event later today. We've talked a lot about perspective here in the strongman events. This is what they need to do in order to move that yoke back. That's definitely the easier way of doing it. <laughs> Simple machines certainly come in handy. 1,000 pounds on that yoke, and these strongmen make these implements look so easy that you forget that Maxime Boudreau just pressed 360 pounds three times. We're going to take a quick look at Maxime's log here. This is so impressive. To viper this kind of weight, so Viper means they're one motioning the movement. He's not only using any leg drive, it's all driving through from the hips and then into the shoulders and triceps. Look at this. Great balance on those first two reps. Needed to use a little bit of leg drive on that last one, but gets the down signal. That is a fantastic performance there from the Canadian Maxime Boudreau. And you mentioned where that would have stacked up last year. Being third in the event, well, the man who did extremely well, one of the men who did extremely well in this event, Mateusz Kaluszkowski, is not here this He's week. not even here, so, yeah, that was a fantastic effort there. So that could easily be Maxime Boudreau's best event finish of this competition, but we still have eight men to go. 46.78 seconds, a very solid time here. In event number five. Aethor Melstead is next up. Melstead coming in in eighth place overall. His best finish so far in the competition was in event number two. He finished in fifth place overall in the Sear Bell Lab. And he's a very solid performer. Doesn't necessarily do incredibly well at, at events, but he's very solid, good all-round strongman. If he can improve in a few little areas, he can then start to really challenge in some of these big competitions. Right now, against the likes of Lysis, against the likes of Novikov, he's not quite good enough to really beat them on certain events, but always solid. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him to push for, he'll, he'll be aiming to finish this. Decent log lifter. Decent on the yoke, just needs to put it all together. Elstead getting set to make his attempt at this event. Reset just takes a little bit of time because they need to adjust the height of the yoke for each individual athlete. You need to make it fair so the pickup point is the same. Otherwise, if you had a giant competing and then it's one of the shorter guys, you could end up having to squat that weight up if it was just set for the, the same height all the time. This is a repeat event from last year, and this is the same log that was used in 2021. 12 inches in diameter, 360 pounds. And all of this road kit just looks incredible. It's what Strongman needs, these big, impressive-looking implements. The Roger coaster we saw earlier, just absolutely fantastic. But the yoke here, incredible, beautiful-looking log. Originally, Strongman, they were just lifting logs that can have been pulled out of a field somewhere, out of a forest, twigs coming off them everywhere. <laughs> the balance wasn't great. Now these implements are perfectly made and engineered. There is the yoke that weighs 1,000 pounds. It's 76 inches wide, 108 inches tall. We see one strongman move it 50 feet, and then we get two guys coming out with a tractor, and they got to move it back. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been under 1,000 pounds? No. It's not a fun position to be in. Here we go. Icelander, Aethor Master. Melstead is set. Maxime Boudreau has the time to beat, getting through the entirety of this event in 46.78 seconds. It really was an impressive run here by Maxime. Let's see what Aethor can do. 
bit slower to get himself going. Steady strides. Even quite long strides. I would focus more on a shorter, faster movement. But he's staying steady. Needs to make sure he doesn't go down. He's about halfway through the 25-foot mark. He just takes a quick break. This kind of he's keeping the implement still, which is good. Just needs to get through. Doesn't want to have to go down again. There we go. Now he'll be onto a much more familiar and comfortable event with him. 30 seconds it took him to get through that yoke carry. Now his first attempt at the 360-pound lock. What technique will A4 use? Squats down on the clean. He's going to drive those hips through, roll the log up the chest. Looks good there. And a strong press for rep number one. He's going for the slow and steady approach. Already, Boudreaux's time has come and gone. He needs to attack this. He's got time, but there's some fantastic athletes to go. I'd be trying to get this done. Two minutes, even though it's a long period of time for a strongman event, it's not really enough time to recover. So he needs to get through this. A good clean again, he's used those legs. Able to keep it in the rack position, but Melsa looks like he's out of gas. Yeah, it doesn't look like a strength issue there. It looks like he's kind of breathing hard and struggling to get air in. Looks like he loosened his belt a little bit too, just to help him get some more oxygen in. They've got such big muscle, they burn through that oxygen really, really fast. And like, like I said, I mean, that first rep on the log, you watch that and you think he's got plenty left, but it's that fitness endurance that the athletes need as well, and that's where the likes of Novikov, the likes of Lissis, they're real all-round athletes. They're not just powerhouses. Technically efficient, fit, and powerful. There we go. And nice recovery by Melstead to get his second rep. The power is there with this man, just needs to put it all together. Combining these events is very draining. You see that rep, it was comfortable again. The strength is there, just needs to work maybe on that endurance combining these, but a solid performance there from Athel. Still got time. I thought the time limit was two minutes, but it must be 2.30. He's gonna call it, it is two minutes and 30 seconds on the cap. Melstead now with the second best score that we have seen, getting two successful reps. Boudreaux is the only man to complete the entirety of the event. We still have seven men to go here. Now our next man is Rob Kearney. He's got experience on this. Last year he competed in this show. Last year Rob was coming back from some personal issues, some injuries. Um, but on paper, these are two separately very good events for him. He's the former American record holder in the log lift. And he's one of the fastest men when it comes to the super yoke. If he's in shape, he could put in a very solid performance here. Rob Kearney, seventh place overall. His best finish was in the Sear Bell ladder as well when he took fourth. But he is six and a half points out of a place inside the top five. So Kearney, if he can do some work over these next two events, could have a really solid finish here at the Rogue Invitational. And he'll be looking forward to this event much more so than the Rogue Coaster earlier. This is really down Rob Street, log lifting and super yoke. Like I said, individually, they've been fantastic events for him in the past. Unfortunately, he tore his tricep and, and that kind of knocked his pressing back a bit, but he's recovered well. We saw on the dumbbell how good that was. Let's see if a year later, the recovery's gone really well. I'm expecting him to get all three on this log this year. Talking to Rob earlier in the week, and he definitely highlighted this as one of the events he was looking forward to, given his prowess with the, the log press and his experience in this event last year. Let's go back and take one more look at Hathor Melstead's performance. The Melstead really took the, the slow and steady approach. It took him a while to get under the yoke and get going. It took about seven seconds of time before he was actually starting. The athletes can get through this implement quickly without any mistakes. That is the key. And I've said it already. But the more energy they have by the time they get to that log, the easier it's going to feel. You could see once he was onto the log, technically very efficient, good power. He was just feeling that exhaustion already from the yoke.
great power on this clean. He's nicely in a rack position there. And look how easy that rep goes up. From up here watching that, you'd think, just get on with it. It looked easy. But I know from experience, when that weight's crushing down on your chest, it's a horrible, horrible feeling. And Mel said would miss an attempt, but then recovered nicely and was able to get a second successful lift. And that is all just that, that weight is crushing down in your chest. You can't get that air in. You start to panic. It's a horrible feeling. And Mel said we'll be able to get that second successful lift as Rob Kearney is set. Here's the whistle. Rob's moving well with this yoke. This looks quick. I'd say this is the fastest we've seen out of any of the athletes so far on this first implement. Already halfway there, and he's just about done. Ten feet to go, and Kearney under in 20 fell seconds. swoop. Under 20 seconds on the first implement. Now he's walking slowly, composing himself. Let's see what kind of shape Rob's log pressing is right now. How is that tricep affecting him? How's his recovery gone? Gets the first rep. Looks like Maxime Boudreau is going to hang on to the lead in this event. Rob Kearney trying to become the second man to finish all three lifts on the log inside the two and a half minute time cap. There is number two. It's, uh, now last year, Rob only managed two reps on the log. Can he finish this one this year? That's obviously been his goal coming in. Do better than you did last year. He's got plenty of time left for this final rep. Third attempt for Kearney. Good clean, needs to stabilize. And he will get it. So there Rob Kearney, better than last year. Much, much better performance from Rob. 120.58 seconds, the second man to finish. All the reps inside that two and a half minute time cap. Maxime Boudreau, still our leader at 46.78 seconds. But Rob Kearney has got to be happy with that effort. Yeah, I, I think he will be. You know, coming back from injury is always nerve-wracking. You get, you can do the, all the training you like, but when you get on in the competition and you're in those events where this is the, the log is the event that he tore his tricep on, and in the back of your mind, it kind of sticks with you. So there's always that little bit of doubt, but he'll be happy to get that out the way. Good, solid performance, finish the event, really get a great run with the yoke. Always good with the fans as well. Started off with the fastest carry that we have seen so far on the yoke. Look how quickly he moves with his thousand pounds. Very solid, great technique, upper body, completely stable, nice quick legs. And then he goes three for three on the log press. I think it's clear to see he had a game plan as well. He wasn't put off by how quick Maxime went. He just focused on doing what he needed to do. It's easy to watch other guys go and think, damn, that was fast. I need to go, you know, really hit it hard. And then you can often make mistakes. So, stuck to his game plan, I think Rob will be pleased. Running his own race, and it was a smart decision as Rob Kearney gets through all three long presses and now sits in second place right now in the event with six men left. He's actually changed his technique on the log as well. He used to jerk the log, whereas now he uses more of a traditional push press. And I spoke to him about that. He just doesn't have the confidence in the tricep anymore to jerk. The yoke is getting reset for Bobby Thompson. And Bobby is a monstrous log presser. But we saw last year, it's not just about the, the, the log. He needs to get through this first implement, and he's very solid on yoke as well. There is a potential for Bobby to get some big, big points on this one. Sixth place after four events. Best finish was in the opening event. The Tower of Power when he took fifth place. Going to be a lot of log lifting going on here as 
Bobby gets set up after this event, the CrossFit competition continues, those athletes are going to be taking on a, a log press. So I hope some of them are paying attention here. I'm sure some of them have been talking to the strongmen backstage, just trying to pick up some tips. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing that event. These CrossFit athletes, unbelievable, but when it comes to power, there is no better than the strong. I don't think you're going to see 360 pounds go up. Um, if we do, we'll be very yeah, impressed. Absolutely. Especially after all the other events they've done as well. Bobby Thompson getting set, and he will be the fifth man to take on this event. Bobby, one of the seven men who are making their first appearances here at the Rogue Invitational. Bobby's PB is up near 485 pounds. So, in theory, 360 shouldn't feel that hard for him. But, like I said already, this yoke implement just there to annoy them a little bit before they get to the log. He is the American record holder in the log lift at 478 pounds. If he can get through this yoke carry in about 30 seconds, look out. Yeah, he's got the capability of one motioning the log. It just all comes down to how he feels once he gets there. Do the legs, does the core feel tired after doing this thousand pounds first? up fast, didn't mess around with it. He got in quickly, he's moving well, good strides. Another athlete taking long strides, but he's got that core strength to cope with that. Very stable, upper body's nice and rock solid. The implement isn't moving around, that's a great run there. Very fast, under 20 seconds. Wow. I think we could see a good time. Bobby is a great log lifter. Let's see what he does with his first rep. Getting right to work. Strict that pressing that first no one. Problem. That is a powerhouse. And a quick reset for the American Nightmare. He's got 10 seconds to track down Maxime Boudreaux, so he's going to have to hurry here. Good rep. He's going to have to go, though. He can't mess about. Boudreaux is going to hang on to the lead. But second place right now in this event, up for grabs. Third rep is good for Bobby Thompson. He's trick pressed every rep there, just showing that incredible shoulder and tricep power. Good enough for second place so far. 53.86 seconds for Thompson. As we are now halfway through the field here. Three strict presses at 360 pounds in about 25 seconds. He's a powerhouse, there's no question about that. And now they will move the yoke back into position and Mitch Hooper will be the next man out. And still, Maxime is our leader so far on this event. All three logs in 46, 78 seconds. Maxime needs that confidence boost as well. He'll be feeling good about this. This next man coming up, Mitchell Hooper, extremely fast on the super yoke. For him, the log is more of the weakness on this one. So let's see how quickly and how much energy is saved by the time he gets to the log. He's a solid log lifter, but if we were talking log for Max, Bobby Thompson is so much stronger than, than the majority of these guys. It's being able to combine all the implements together. And look at this, this was a solid run. Nice and steady, he was quick. Core looking tight, the implement not moving at all. It's using that white line in the center to guide him. That was a fast time for Bobby on the open. The only criticism I can say is he's just a little bit slow getting to the implement. Guys like Novikov, guys like Lissis, they're gonna move quickly between implements and quickly between each rep. Each individual rep for Bobby was fantastic. He's just not moving quick enough between to challenge the really top guys such as um, Maxime, who's in our first place so far. 
Really impressive effort for Bobby Thompson on that log as we expected, but not able to track down Maxime Boudreaux, but does sit in second place right now in this event. So we have our top five up next, and what a top five it's been so far. This contest just improving all the time. The athletes getting better every year. New faces, and this guy has been a revelation this year in Strongman. And Mitch Hooper was having some fun with some of the CrossFit fans earlier as the strongmen were warming up. He walked over to where the CrossFit athletes have been warming up, picked up one of the barbells and attempted to do an overhead squat. Got about maybe a quarter of the way there, dumped the barbell, set kind of a ta-da motion to the crowd. <laughs> they gave him a big ovation, but it was great to see that interaction. He's a real showman as well. He loves playing up to the crowd. Hooper does have an event win under his belt. He won the Husafel sandbag carry to close out Friday night. And that is what has helped him move himself into the top five. He'll, he'll expect a lot of himself on this event. I know if you're talking to him, he wants to be top three minimum on this one, potentially take the win. Yes, sir. And take the front end over the line. And then you sprint. Best of luck. Thanks, sir. So far in his international career, he's not been beaten on the Super Young. So if it was just that event, you'd be almost like putting all your money on him to take the win here. But as we've seen already, it's combining the two. If it was just a log lift for Max, I would expect Bobby Thompson to win this event. It's who can, can combine all these together. And that is a, an interesting element about this one. Maxime Goudreau still had the time to beat at 46.78 seconds. It's interesting he's going to talk to the referee there. I don't know if he's trying to bribe him. I was going to say, is there some money to change hands there? <laughs> Here comes Mitch Hooper. He will be the sixth athlete out here. 46.78, still the time to beat by our current leader, Maxime Boudreau. Maxime Boudreau talking things over with Rob Kearney. Cooper is about ready to go here. Ten seconds to go. Now watch out for how quick he's going to be on this super yoke. to work. And look at the speed he gets to him so quickly. Fast, short steps. Look at the foot pace. Unbelievable on this event. Now, how does he do transitioning to the log? 10 seconds on the carry and right to work is Mitch Hooper with his first attempt and that Great is no problem. Rep. Doesn't even let go and he's got two in the bag. And he's got time to get the win here. 28, 29 seconds. If he gets this, he'll go into the lead. And wow. Mitch Hooper smashes that event, 32.39 seconds. That is eight seconds faster than Kilius Koski from last year. Unbelievable performance there from Mitch Hooper. 10 seconds, sub 10 seconds on the first implement and three solid reps on the log. He is going to be extremely happy with that. I think that's going to be a very, very hard time to beat. Mitch Hooper is trying to work his way onto the podium here, and that is going to help. He trails Pablo Nakanechi for fourth place by four and a half points. Nakanechi is going to be up next, and the pressure's on now. Pablo's been exceptional in this show so far. The deadlift he put in on day one, unbelievable. His performance on the arm over arm, first thing today. The sheer power of this man is crazy. He's got all the power in the world to do well at this event. I want to see how he can kind of combine the two events. Does he let any mistakes slip in? Sometimes he's been known to kind of, he's so new to the sport and so powerful, but he still has a few things to learn, which is quite scary for the opposition because give this guy another year and I think he's going to be incredible. Let's take another look at Mitch Hooper's effort. We knew he would do well.
on the yoke, and he sprinted across the track. I was hoping for big things for Mitch on this one. We've, um, we've been working hard on this event, but you never want to jinx things. <laughs> and, you know, his log is very solid, but there are better log lifters in the event. I just knew that he could get through that yoke so quickly, he'd put himself in a good position. And the difference there between him and Bobby is he just didn't waste any time. He held on to the handles, was fast between each rep, and he was saving time there. You rarely see someone with that many log lifts not even let go of it at the bottom. That was an unbelievable performance there. Mitch Hooper hoping to bring home his second event win of the competition. And that time, of 32.39 seconds is gonna be really hard to beat, but we still have the top four men in the standings to go, and Pablo Nakanechny is gonna be the next man to step up, and I'm wondering if he's even gonna be able to fit into that yoke as wide as he is. <laughs> he might be able to jam those shoulders in. I'm gonna grease up the sides to make sure he has a, enough of an opportunity to get that thing onto his shoulders. He is like a Terminator, isn't he? If there's any movie producers out there looking for a villain. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting looking at the leaderboard. I mean, with Alexi, Trey Mitchell, and Martins Lissis, they've stretched away a little bit from everyone else, but Pavlo's not far behind. And a big performance here could really shake things up. Only a point and a half back of Martinez leads. He's for third. Just three back of Trey Mitchell for second. And Such a big man. He's exceptionally fast. I've seen him move sandbags, farmers' walks. He's quick. He does have an event win in the Tower of Power. He got 12 reps yesterday to open up the competition. Pounds. But then he followed that up with a ninth, and that's really the only blemish he's had because the other two finishes third and second. Yeah, he, he's just that one weakness so far. And I think, you know, another year of training, it might not be such a weakness. And that second place in the Roga Coaster pull, you and Brian were talking about it earlier as we are going through that event. If he cleans up his technique there a little bit, that could have been a win. I agree. You know, Brian and myself are watching that thinking, how fast could this guy have gone if he's had some decent training and technique with it? Because it was just raw power. He was missing the rope with almost every pull. You know, those little blemishes in technique, they just kind of add up little seconds at a time. And he could have taken four, five, six, seven seconds off his time just by improving technique. Pablo Nakanechi getting set as Mitch Hooper will see if his time will survive. 32.39. Pardon me, six nine seconds. That really is a fast time on this event. Got through that yoke carry in about 10 seconds and then just ripped through those three reps at 360. And I will say, the quicker you can get through this yoke, it makes a big, big difference. If you are under that thousand pounds for a long period of time, it drains you very, very quickly. You could be the best log lifter in the world, but if you get to that thing, you've been under there for 40 or 50 seconds, your energy levels are gonna be zapped. Here goes Pablo Nakanechny. It's taking longer to get going. And this is not a good start for Pablo. Very, very short steps. He's moving better now. Going to his rhythm. More than halfway done. And Ten feet away. Other than a little mistake at the start, he's solid through there. But it's taking almost 30 seconds for him to get his hands on the log. Mitch Hooper was finished at this point. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Nakanashi now is the first attempt at 360. That and oh. does not go. He'll get right back to work. He needs to compose himself, focus on the clean. He's got very, very long arms. Real advantageous when it comes to the deadlift. Not so good on a press, but a good rep given to him there. He needs to make use of those strong legs. 
one rep so far, and we're approaching 60 seconds. If he can beat Rob Kearney's time, he can slide into fourth place right now in the event. He really needs to. This is not what he wanted. And that's not going to go. So he's already missed two attempts. And this could be his worst finish to break. Still has more than a minute to go before we hit the two and a half minute time cap. So now for him, it's just about finishing the event, do some damage control. Here. Yeah, he really needs to try and get these two reps. And it's very difficult to recover in this time frame. And he knows it. And he's going to call it. So he will wind up with just one successful lift. And he kept the time from the exact position, but that is not what Pavlo wanted. But he has the potential to finish ninth or tenth right now. And that's going to be good news for Mitch Hooper, who was five points behind. Four and a half. Hey, he's got four and a half points coming into this event, so Mitch Hooper could find himself in fourth place overall. As Martins Lietzis will be the next man out. And this is a big event for Martins Lietzis as he was able to shave two points off that six point deficit that he had to Alexei Novikov in the last event. And now trails by four. Lietzis trying to repeat as Rogue Invitational Champion as the equipment crew getting that yoke back to the starting line. So one thing we can guarantee with Martins is he's going to finish. It comes down to speed. How quickly can he do this? I don't think he's even going to worry too much about Mitch Hooper. Mitch Hooper's a fair few points behind. Martins is focusing on Trey and Alexi, doing a solid time and putting the pressure on them. Pablo Nekonechny ran into some problems early on the yoke, got himself sorted, was able to get through it. He took a long time to get going with the yoke and then went down very, very quickly. So straight away, he has to relift that thousand pounds up. It was not his favorite event by the looks of things. Needs a bit more work. He's keeping his knees bent all the time, which keeps a lot of strain on the quads. Ideally, you want to try and move from the hips rather than the knees on this event. Hips, they're much bigger, stronger joint. And then he misses his first attempt. And was able to then get himself collected and, and get the one good rep that he's going to get credit for. Yeah, this was a good rep here. Good use of the legs. Gets his head through. Nice, solid rep. But he was just done at this point. The energy had just been used up. Those big, huge muscles just unable to recover in that time frame. Final attempt, just as you can tell, and as you said, just he was out of, out of gas at that point. So we're into the business end now with our top three athletes to come. Martins Lisis, Trey Mitchell, and currently leading Alexei Novikov. These three, this is going to be vital. I really feel after last year, Martins Lisis was just, just kept creeping and creeping closer, and he's sort of doing a similar thing this year. Novikov, if he wants a chance of winning this title, needs to go into the stones a few places ahead of Martins because I think Martins is the heavy favorite when it comes to the stones later. And Martins knows that, so he's going to focus on a big performance here. If he can put that pressure on Novikov, he's going to be feeling it. And Martins will be confident going into those stones. And that stone over Hitching Post event was the only event that Martins leads. He's won last year at the Rogue Invitational and route to his first championship here. Now, Leetzis is getting set. We were talking about this earlier, but as impressive as Alexei Novikov has been in his career, he has never beaten Not Martins once so Leetzis. far. He's not managed to beat Leetzis in any competition. He's been extremely close a few times now. Even the world's strongest man this year, they were joint on points. But Martins got the, the count back, or the, the winner of the last event rule. So he took the win ahead of him. Novikov would love to beat Martins, but Martins is an exceptional strong man. Really has no weaknesses. Let's see what kind of time he was second on this event last year behind our former record holder, Kiliuszkowski. Like you said, he probably doesn't want to worry about chasing Hooper right here. Just run his race, and that should be good enough to put the pressure on the two men ahead of him. Absolutely. He's raring to go. 
waiting for that beep. Just looks like a caged animal, ready to be unleashed. Beats his right to work He's on up the fast. Yard. Big long strides. Not so efficient on this event. He's had some knee issues, that's why he's got the knee wraps on there, just to try and keep those knees supported. But this isn't a great run by Lises. He's not gone down, which is good. He needs to get over that line. There we go. Martins is there, and now he will hustle to the log. So this will be more familiar for him. Mitch Hooper is going to stay in first. First rep down for Lises. Good rep there on the first rep. He's been slow till this point, but he looked powerful on that rep. Gonna have to go some if he wants to beat Boudreau. I don't think he's going to beat Boudreau. Oh, and that was that was a soft lockout, if I'm honest, once again. Final rep, and now he's looking at fourth place in the event. So Leeds is having some trouble here. This is slower than his performance last year on this event, so clearly not in the same shape. Maybe some of those injuries catching up with him. And now he's looking exhausted. I've got to say, he looks bigger than I've ever seen him. Come on, Martins, compose yourself. You need this rep. And I'll tell you what, Alexei Novikov is going to be this is big quietly for Alexei pleased Novikov. about this. Martins like... struggling big time. I think maybe the knee wraps could have been a big mistake. I was never a fan of having knee wraps on for an event like the yoke because the blood just mm -hmm. sinks into the quads. To have it on for that amount of time where you're going through the yoke, then into the log, Maybe just can't feel those legs. They've built, they've blown up with blood. Romark getting them off him as quick as possible, but that could be disastrous for the defending champion. Only two successful lifts on the log for Martins Leeds. And Alexei Novikov has the door wide open right now if he can take advantage. That is a big, a big shot. And Trey Mitchell now will be thinking, I've got a chance of this, and Alexei Novikov will be too. Trey Mitchell will be the next man out. He is in second place overall, just two and a half points back of Alexei Novikov. Just didn't look like the strongest performance from the start for Martins Leeds. No, very wide stance, struggling. I know he's had injuries. I will kind of say that he's had injuries and maybe just not fully recovered. The knee wraps, from my point of view, I think that was a mistake. However, he probably felt he needed that support around the knees, but clearly that's caught up with him in terms of the legs blowing up. And I do think he's bigger than we've ever seen. I'm not sure what his body weight is, but he looks physically bigger. Maybe that fitness and conditioning, not quite what it used to be. That first rep was powerful. After he got that one and went right to work on the second, I really thought he had a chance to, to I, finish I here. Agree. I agree. The wheels just came off. I was expecting another easy rep, but then it didn't happen, and it was, it was almost a soft rep. He got that second one, and then he looked like he was struggling to stay on his feet. Martins leads these two successful lifts on that 360-pound log. Mitch Hooper is creeping closer to his second event win of the competition, but Trey Mitchell and Alexei Novikov, the top two in the overall standings, have yet to go, and Mitchell, a bit of a home field advantage. He's from about four and a half hours away from here in Lumberton, Texas. Trey has been super impressive this week. Recently won the Shaw Invitational. He won it last year as well, but since this year, he just seems to have grown in confidence. He believes he belongs at the top now. And if you covered up the names on the leaderboard and I looked at his finish, I would assume that's Martins Leeds. Second, second, fourth, and fourth. And what, what really impressed me was the fourth places in the sandbag carry and the arm over arm, the roger coaster, because they were notoriously weak events for him. He's clearly gone away, put the work in, training hard, smart training, dedication. He's not someone that focuses on social media. He's not a big personality. He's someone out there putting in the work, improving from competition to competition, and he deserves to be in this place. He's performed exceptionally well. Thirty-two point six nine seconds is still the top time for Mitch Hooper. There I really Mitch. don't think anyone's going to be touching that time, but the big question is these two battling now for places one and two. Trey Mitchell 
and Alexi can really stretch away from Martins Lissis after this one. Pavlo Nekonechny having a poor performance. Martins Lissis having a poor performance. They are going to put themselves almost in an unassailable position as long as they can complete this event. I'll tell you what, Trey is a good log lifter, so if he gets through this yoke nice and quickly, he could have some big points once again. We saw Trey in Columbus at the Arnold Classic. He took seventh there. And that was a shock. I really expected more from him at the Arnolds, but once again, he was an athlete that was going into that competition with an injury. Since then, all his results have been exceptional. And like I said, coming off a big win at the Shore Invitational recently, the confidence is sky high. He believes he is one of the elite in the world right now. And he's training hard for these competitions. Trey Mitchell. Trying to close the gap between himself and overall leader Alexei Novikov. Before this competition, I really thought Trey could be fourth, battling just off the podium. He's impressed me so much, and now he is within a chance of winning. Needs to get through this yoke as effectively as possible. Slow but steady. Make sure you don't go down, Trey. Get to that lob as fresh as possible. There we go, 20 seconds for the yoke. Mitchell right to work on his first attempt. Nice to compose. Oh, easy press. There's the down signal. Here's rep number two. Good and press again. Count. Now, what can he do this third one? It needs to be quick. I don't think he's quite going to beat Boudreaux. Has he... a chance at Bobby Thompson, though, right now. Needs to be quick. And he will get it. Gets it. Big performance from Trey Mitchell. Oh, perhaps he uh, wasn't he did given not one get of those credit reps. for the second rep. So that's. So he needs to put this one away now. Make sure he beats Kearney. Now he can get fourth place in the event. So the second rep did not count. There we go. And that's that it. One will. 108.05 seconds for Trey Mitchell, who finishes the event now, sits in fourth place. Uh, I just hate myself for it. So 108.05 is the mark that Alexei Novikov needs to be thinking about right now to not surrender any points to Mitchell. Alexei is in a very, very nice position to be in. He's done this event before. He knows he can complete it. Made a mistake last year. So he needs, he needs to use that experience, not make the same mistakes. If he can come second on this event, he's going to put himself in a beautiful position going into the stones. The, the, the whole result from this event has really changed the dynamics of the yeah, overall the right now. And Alexi has all the advantage to take that last event and be in a really, really good position. Not super fast on the yoke, but very efficient, not putting it down on that whole 50-foot tread. Yeah, he was solid, around about 20 seconds for the yoke. Not the most stable run, but he, he got it done. But I believe it was either the first or second rep that wasn't given to him by the referee. Let's have a quick look at this now. Keep an eye on Magnus for Magnuson in the upper right-hand part of your screen if he doesn't leave the view here. So that first rep, it kind of comes down quickly. I'm not sure if it was that one or the second one. That Must looked have like a better first. rip. I think it was that first one that wasn't given. So essentially having to press the log four times. But he could match it. And that was the rep that did it for Trey Mitchell, who now sits in fourth place in the event. Good for seven points right now. And Lexi Novikov, the overall leader, will be the final man to go. And this is a golden opportunity for him right now. Yeah, well, the advantage of going last as well is huge. He knows he doesn't have to try and beat the likes of Mitch Hooper. His biggest rivals have not performed maybe as well as he would expect on this one. He just needs to go and put a solid run in, and he knows he will go into the stones in a very, very strong position. I think Alexi's going to be looking 
at the likes of Maxime Boudreau. He'll be trying to get around that 46 seconds. Two minutes, Alexi. Two minutes. Two minutes. Uh, he, he does that. He's going to put some good distance between himself and both Trey Mitchell and Martins Lietzis. Absolutely. And depending on how this shakes out, I mean, Mitch Hooper was only six points back of Lietzis for third. Mitch is going to fly up the table on this one. He'll overtake Pavlo. He may well overtake Lietzis as well. We'll get into that in a second. We still need to focus on Novikov. It's all very well talking about it. He still has to perform. Alexei Novikov has yet to finish lower than third. An incredible athlete, still the second youngest athlete in this lineup. He's won Europe's strongest man. He's won world's strongest man. He was second at the Arnold's, third place at last year's Rogue Invitational. He would love to add the Rogue Invitational to his list of achievements. So many people love watching Novikov because he's more normal size. There's still, I know he's still a huge yeah. human being compared to an average man, but he's not one of the giants. So much power in a smaller package, but athletic, smart, powerful. He really is an incredible athlete. And he thinks about everything as well. He's, just, he's really not just a brute, really thinks about everything. He will be strategizing, thinking about how many points he needs. Now he needs to perform. Novikov waiting for the buzzer here. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Getting the crowd behind him. Novikov is a blisteringly fast athlete as well. He's normally very quick on events like the Yoke. Here goes Alexei Novikov. Trying to put himself in position to bring home the road here we go. He's moving well. Very, very fast. Oh, he's gone down. That's surprising. Ten feet to go. And Novikov is through. So, what can he do on the log? I'm surprised he went down there, you know, knowing that the, he didn't have that pressure to go blisteringly quickly. He needs to go on this log. First attempt is good. The second right. attempt is good. So Maxime Boudreaux is going to lock up second place right now, and Thompson looking like he's going to stay in Thompson third. Thompson holds third, so he needs to try. This has got to count. Trey Mitchell. And Novikov will do it, he and he will pick it. up a point at least on Trey Mitchell. So oh, what an interesting result that is. It's really changed the dynamic of the overall. We'll bring you the overall scores in a second. But Mitch Hooper, unbelievable there. Winning this event in a time of 32.39 seconds. Unbelievable time. Got through the yoke in 10 seconds, did Mitch Hooper. And then just gripped it and ripped it when it came to the log press. He's going to be an extremely happy man. And that's his second event win of the competition. His second in three events. He's finishing the competition strong. Didn't have the start he wanted. Was disappointed want? on the deadlift, disappointed on the sear dumbbell. But since then, the results have got better. Winning the sandbag carry. Solid performance on the roller coaster. And then another win here on the yoke into log medley. Here are your results for the Yoke Carry Log Lift Medley. Mitch Hooper and Maxime Boudreau finish first and second as the Canadians dominate. Bobby Thompson winds up in third place. Alexei Novikov is going to pick up a point on Trey Mitchell. And Martins Lietzis finishes in seventh place. That's going to be his worst finish of this competition. How often do we see that? Martins Lietzis in seventh place. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with your event winner. Mitch, three years ago, you were running a marathon. Today, you just put on an incredible display of strongman ability. How do you go from there to here? You just work hard, a little bit more every day, and uh, 
yeah, you just get stuck into it, and that's sort of the interest of the sport. It's not about, for most people, it's not about if you can do more than someone else. It's, it's just about what you can do yourself, and that's how I started, and that's pretty much how I still am, and that has me close to the top of the world. You were very confident coming into this event. What about this combo gave you that confidence? Last year, they did the same event, so we had a pretty reasonable idea of what people were capable of. Uh, last year, 42 seconds won the event. I did it 35 seconds in training. I thought that would probably win as well. Um, and, you know, yoke for me is, it just comes second nature. Uh, and then that log weight is pretty comfortable for me for three. So you put these two together, and I'd back myself against pretty much anyone. Well, congratulations. You were spot on. Thank you. That is a smart bet. Thanks, Here are your unofficial standings now heading into the final event. Alexei Novikov with 41 and a half points. He's three and a half up on Trey Mitchell. Martins Litsis sits in third in a tie with Hooper. That is huge for Hooper. He's gained a lot of points there, but more importantly, Martins has dropped back from Mitchell and Novikov. At least he's trying to repeat his champion, and it's going to take a, not a miracle, but he's going to have to win that next event I and then get a lot of help in the process yeah, to make Ma up that seven-point deficit. Martins is going to have to just focus on trying to put in a big performance and securing third place and then hoping that Trey and Alexi make a mistake. But my money would be on Trey and Alexi battling it out for the title now. Trey is a very, very good stone lifter. He's not out of this yet, and Alexi's not his favorite event. He's a very solid performer when it comes to stones, but he's not a guarantee. So it's not over yet. We're going to have an exciting finish, but he will have that advantage of being able to go last, seeing what everyone else is doing, just knowing that he's got to stay within touching distance of Trey Mitchell. We are far from done here at the 2022 Rogue Invitational on this very busy Saturday. Mitch Hooper, second event win of the competition. One event left for the Strongmen. We will crown a champion later this evening. We still have an event left for the CrossFit athletes. They'll get their go at the log. The Rogue Iron Game. Pat Sherwood, Jamie Hagia, and Dr. Bill Crawford coming up next.